All right, let's get this going. I don't want to bring this up and lower the uh, sadness level in here, but uh, these are kind of uh, proofs we're going to do today. All right. I, I want you to know every problem why the triangles are congruent. And what you're going to have to do is, hey, this triangle has been translated. So what do you know about two triangles that have been translated? Are they, in, are they different shapes or sizes? No, so they're still congruent. Maybe it'd be a rotation. Maybe it'd be a reflection. Maybe honors level might be a combination of two of them, all right, that match them up to each other. But at least you know translations, rotations, or reflections, we put them under this umbrella called a what? Rigid motions, all right? And they are always, the pre-image and the image are always congruent to the original. So that's what we're going to do. The first couple here you'll see are really filling in the blanks. And here's why you're going to fill in the blank. There's a certain set of sentences that I need to make this, uh, to make this proof true, all right? For you to get full credit on the Regents exam. They need to see certain things on there. So you take a look at the first one we're going to do. What am I, what transformation's happening? What transformation is happening in number one? It's a reflection. All right, so if I know a reflection is happening, what do I know about my two figures at the end? They have to be congruent, same size, same shape. But what do I need in as far as answers go, why they're congruent? Well, you first start off by telling me what the heck you're doing. They tell me I'm doing a reflection. So I state that reflections are what? Rigid motions. Then I tell whoever's reading it, here's what a rigid motion is. It preserves, okay, side, yes, it does preserve side length. We're going to set, call that distance. Preserves distance, which is side length, and angle measure, all right? This is what's going to come up in all of these that we do today. You're going to tell me the transformation that's being performed, Tell me it's a rigid motion, and rigid motions preserve distance and angle measure. All right. Will it get a little bit more detailed? Yeah, because you'll have to actually find out what the transformation is. I just won't provide it at the beginning. Anything right now? I know this is fun, fill in the blank. All right, but those blanks are going to go bye-bye in a second. All right. All right, next one. Prove to me why those two triangles are congruent. I didn't provide the transformation either. So you're going to have to discuss in your group right now, how do I get triangle ABC to match up with triangle XYZ? What transformation can I do that will match those up? And if you need to, sure. I know I only have one blank here, but you can have more than one. Whatever gets the job done. But in this case, I prefer just one transformation here, please. Okay. So discuss it in your group, give you about 30 more seconds. How am I getting triangle ABC on the XYZ? Okay, any groups? I don't want to call on anybody here until we get pretty good at this. Any groups want to report back what they think the transformation is here? What do you got over there, group? Okay, so the transformation that would move ABC to XYZ is a rotation. Now, here's the key. That's not good enough. You No longer can you just tell me the word. You need to tell me. If, it's a, if you're going to tell me it's a translation, how many up, down, left, and right? If it's a rotation, how many degrees? If it's a reflection, over what? All right, so these words alone will not cut it anymore. You guys actually said it. It's a rotation of what? It's a rotation of 180 degrees, and I hate to break the news. That's still not good enough. Around what? The origin, so a rotation of 100, 180 degrees, and sorry I didn't provide enough space around the origin. Is 
There was another way to do this. You could have also done a reflection through the origin too. All right, that was the other way you could have done it. All right, reflection through the origin. Okay, so let's keep going here. Transformation is a rotation of 180 degrees around the origin since, what did we just perform? Since rotations are rigid motions, and this wording is going to stay the same the entire time, they preserve distance and angle measure. And we are going to add a little in here now. Thus, this is where you get to have a little creative ability. Thus, henceforth, in conclusion. Anybody else? Sure, because of this. Anybody else? Fancy word here I could put in? <laughs> I'll go with it, Hither. Somebody else in my other said uh, subsequ subsequentially. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So anyone you want there, all right, when you get to write your own with no blanks. So thus, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. Setup's going to be the same every time. You're going to tell me what you're doing. Get specific. Tell me what you're doing is a rigid motion. It preserves distance and angle measure. Thus, the triangles are congruent. It is a proof, yeah. But we're not putting it in statements reasons. And you're using your knowledge of transformations to prove them congruent. Okay, next up, directions change slightly, and I want you to be aware of this. Triangle A prime, B prime, C prime is the image of triangle ABC after a sequence, meaning one, not gonna cut it, probably impossible. So you're gonna have to come up with two or more, you can have more than two, that map these two onto each other. All right, anytime it asks for a sequence, it's looking for two or more transformations that map these onto each other. This might be a little tougher, so go ahead, give you a couple extra minutes here in your groups. Find how A, B, C, and A prime, B prime match up. Two or more, two or more here. I'm looking for something specific. You and your group may do a different two, that's fine. Any group want to come back here? Any group here? This group right here taking the title today, huh? Yep, and a... What about it? Okay. Everyone all right with that? You, again, those that's the one I chose, but maybe you found a different way. So I'm going to say ABC undergoes a reflection through the y-axis and a translation of, you can say, we had, he just said down three, that's fine. You can also put it in the different, you can put it in vector notation and say zero, negative three. Uh, you can put it in function notation since it's a translation or in words like we did. And then since, what are we going to put now? Since what? Since reflections and translations. <laughs> Whoa, hey, bless you. How you doing? Translations are both rigid motions. They preserve distance 
and angle measure. Thus, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. And any issues? Because now I'm going to drop the blanks, as you can see. We all good? Okay. They give us the triangle. All right, we got it. Ooh, we got to actually do the graphing ourselves. So we're going to translate first five units to the right and two units up, followed by a reflection over the line. Whoa, ho, ho. Whoa, we have never seen that before. Reflected over y equals zero. And some of you are, hey, some of you are picking up, ready? Forget the zero, what if I said y equals two? What type of line would y equals two be? Horizontal, that's still true here. Y equals zero is still a horizontal line, just we've always called it what? The x-axis, all right? We've always called it the x-axis. All right, so the first thing, let's translate this sucker and call it A prime, B prime, C prime. So where are we going here? Right five up two. And then from here, flipping it over the old x-axis. And then, how about a good explanation now? No blanks. What's a good explanation? What did we just perform? So translations and reflections are? Are rigid motions which preserve distance and angle measure. Anybody want to use a different word? Henceforth? Henceforth. Triangle ABC is congruent to, make sure you put the double primers in there. All right. By the way, speaking of words, we did a little research yesterday in seventh period and checkbook, the longest word you can make that has line symmetry. Horizontal line symmetry. The longest word that you can make that has vertical line symmetry. So I would write it you know, top down, it would draw a vertical line and it would be symmetrical. Hoity toity. Okay. Hoity toity, everybody. That is. What's that? Uh, I didn't see, I just looked up words. So that was it. And then also, a little challenge for you, honors kids. Maybe don't, don't look it up. What is the only number if it would? if it was spelled out, it would be in alphabetical order. 
Like if you spelled out the number one, the letters are not in alphabetical order. There's only one word, there's only one number out there. If you spelled it out, the letters would be in alphabetical order. R is after you in the alphabet. I'm not going to say. Look at the brains going crazy. Something to think about. And the other question was, what is the highest number? I want to make sure I say this correctly. What is the highest number that after it, all the other numbers have an N in it? So the highest number that does not have an N in it. 100? Yeah, 800 has an N in it. It's 88, yep. 88, yep. Everyone, every other number after it has a nine in, an N in it. So still working on this number that the letters are in alphabetical order? What do we have? Sinead? Because 40 does not have a U in it. She is correct. 40 does not have a U in it. All right. The letters are in alphabetical order. Nice job, Sinead. Not because she got it correctly, I was going to do this anyway, but uh, you do not have to do the first problem. I'm going to eliminate the first one. I just want to stick, I just want to, just so you know, I just want to stick strictly on the graph. That's why. I just want to stick strictly on the graphs, all right? So you can get going on those. And I also check your darn assignment sheet. There is a Regents Review problem or two tonight. 